In this chapter, we're going to talk about working capital management. Now, this is just a little bit of an introduction. There are whole courses on short-term financial management, but this will help us understand a little bit about some of the techniques and some of the challenges that we have with um, understanding how to manage the short-term aspects of a, co of a company. In addition, quite frankly, this is where most people kind of start their finance careers. They start working with short-term types of uh, management in the financial area, like accounts receivable, inventory, et cetera. So what is working capital? Essentially, working capital itself is the management of uh, assets and liabilities that is current assets and current liabilities. So working capital itself just refers to current assets. We have another phrase, net working capital, which is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. And of course, with current assets and liabilities essentially equating to short-term um, uh, measures of managing money, it could be positive or negative. Of course, we want it to be positive, but we have a variety of techniques that can help us manage these aspects. So what are the primary things that we're managing? We're managing cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable. Those are the four primary things that we're going to look at as far as managing funds. So the basic idea here is there's a trade-off. We can have lots of current assets. The problem with current assets is they don't generate revenues, right? So this money is tied up in these short-term things where most of the cash flows are developed in uh, and profits are developed through running the operations of the company, uh, such as manufacturing, et cetera. So we know what profitability is, and we can obviously increase profits by increasing revenues or decreasing costs. Risk is the probability that we won't be able to pay our bills. And of course, if you can't pay your bills, the term we use is insolvency. It means you can't pay your bills as they come due. Now this is, if you think about it, it's a short-term um, metric, right? Can you pay your bills this month? That is, if you cannot, that is insolvency. So the first tool we want to look at is something called the cash conversion cycle. This is just the length of time for the operations of the company to work its way through uh, the process, if you will. So the operating cycle, the first part of this, just measures the time from when we purchase inventory for making a product, et cetera, to the actual receipt of the receivables from our cash sales that are done on credit, right? So this is just a time frame. So the two times that we measure, the first one is DCI, days carry inventory. This is the average number of days inventory is on the shelf. DSO is the average number of days customers owe us for their purchases. So it's an accounts receivable measure. So when you add those two together, that's what we refer to as the operating cycle. So now we're looking at this time frame. So the time frame, as you see here, let me make this just a wee little bit bigger. The time frame goes from buying the inventory, that's your average inventory, 
add that to the average time it takes people to pay us once we sell the goods. And then we have to add something up. Actually, we have to subtract something. The thing that we need to subtract is how long does it take for us to pay for the things that we owe? So that is the difference. So if you look here, we have 58 and 40 days. So that's 98 days is the operating cycle for this company. When you subtract out the days it takes for us to pay, which is the average payment period, subtract that out, it leaves nine days. So the cash conversion cycle here is nine. Now we want this number to be as low as we possibly can. In fact, sometimes it might actually even be negative, right? So if, if we're paying our bills, if we're paying for our product after we sell them and after we receive the money, I mean, that's not really a terrible thing. It might have some influence on our credit rating, maybe. <clears throat> if we're viewed as having slow payback. But again, we want this number to be as low as possible. <clears throat> so the next question then is, how do we finance this cash conversion cycle? Now there's two kinds of funding. We can fund permanent. This is the permanent funding is the constant investment in operating assets that we need to run the business over time. Seasonal funding then is what's required to take care of those periods during the year where we have excess sales or sales growing more than other times. And we need to cover those that excess amount of operating assets needed during those increased times. So let's look at this example. Here we have uh, Nicholson, right? On average, they have 19, uh, excuse me, $1.9 million in current assets. Their business is very stable over time. So its operating assets can be viewed as permanent. In addition, they have accounts payable of 350 and again, we're saying that those are also stable. So the permanent investment in operating assets of the company, 1.55 million. So that's, again, that is our permanent funding. So if the company adds something to their business that has an additional asset investment of $400,000 for two months, how are they going to finance that additional asset base? Now, the company has choices. An aggressive funding strategy is a strategy where we're going to fund our seasonal requirements with short-term debt and our permanent requirements with long-term debt. A conservative funding strategy would be to cover all of our debt, both seasonal and payment permanent, with long-term debt. So what that would mean is we need to have enough, have borrowed enough money to cover all circumstances. Now, what happens if the seasonal things, once those seasonal things for the year go away, what do we do now with that extra cash? Along with the conservative funding strategy, there has to be some type of an investment strategy to store that money over the short term. So what are our strategies? We want to turn over inventory as quickly as possible without stockouts. So we want to manage our inventory, right? We want to keep it as low as possible, but we don't want to have any stockouts. We need to collect accounts receivable as quickly as possible without losing sales from uh, our collection techniques. We need to manage mail, processing, 
clearing time to reduce those when we're collecting customers' monies so that we can get cash back into our account as soon as possible. In addition, that means we also have to apply those strategies as well to paying our suppliers. And with that in mind, we have to pay accounts payable as slowly as possible without damaging the firm's credit rating. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.